That's not going to happen. Security's going to throw me out. So f*** it. I just look like I knew what I was doing. Put the shoulders back and just walk with purpose. Walk through where people come out. Ruby <laughs> Revival's lounge. In through where the security is. The security's looking at me like I'm... And who's this bloke? Walked all the way through right up to the security point. They waved over the police officer. Police guy comes over. He's like looking real angry. Welcome back to another episode of the Ben and Bergs podcast. I'm Ben, your favorite high school dropout and CEO of Collective Shift. Alongside me is Bergs, your favorite MBA and COO of Collective Shift, Australia's leading crypto portfolio insights company, providing professional analysis and portfolio strategies for crypto investors like you. Bergs and I are a unique blend of established and the self-made, and we're here to break down crypto, business, and personal growth. But we don't just talk the shit. We give you the insights that you need to make better investments, build successful businesses, and level up your life. And today we're talking Bali. I have moved back here for the next month. I've been here for about four days. It's been a roller coaster of the last three or four days. But for those that are a nomadic or look to do remote working or can remote work, Bali is probably my favorite spot to work uh I, the clarity i get the focus i can get over here is just second to none um and it's been awesome to be back here honestly Berg. So i'm keen to share like the lessons i have of like being a nomad back here in bali what i've learned you know from day to day how it's different this time around uh because it's been a bit of a tr- what did i say tumultuous uh start <laughs> mate always is with you <laughs> i give you a call and you're like this happened, oh, mate, and then this, and then this, but we got the masterclass, and it's all good, mate. I'm keeping positive, but I got no money because this happened. <laughs> mate, you just land. Actually, it was before you actually landed, mate. You, what happened with your clothes? Kick, kick us off at the start. So uh, to, to, to kick things off, I left my suit jacket and my two shirts at the hotel I was staying at, so I left those there. I also accidentally stole the, uh, the room service iPad, took that with me. And I left my AirPods in another hotel. So I'd, I'd switch hotels twice, left everything everywhere, uh, and ended up having to go to Bali that day and uh, had to spend a shitload of money in an Uber to swing around and pick, pick everything. <laughs> Amazing, mate. So Off to a flying start. Off to a flyer, uh, get on the plane, get to Bali. It's super late. I'm super knackered. Got a bit of a head cold. Like I've been just going hard, needed a rest. It was like 2 a.m. Go get some money out. Um, get, get some money out and then go get uh, my SIM card. And as I'm getting the SIM card, I need to get my money out to pay for it. I go look at my wallet and there's no card in there. I was like, oh, fuck, where's my card? I'm like, oh, fuck the ATM. Look at my card in the ATM. Run back to the ATM. There's no card in the ATM. Fuck, someone stole my card. Fuck, I don't have another card. Fuck, what am I going to do? I don't have a second card. It's like 2 a.m. in the morning. All I want to do is sleep. There's no one around. When I spoke to this guy, I'm like, mate, I don't know where my card's gone. Either someone's stolen it or it's in the ATM. I don't know what. He's like, you know, couldn't really understand me. And he's like, Basically, long story short, couldn't do anything that night. They don't have a key for it. Got to come back the next day. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. The next day, I've got the master class. I've got to move hotels. I'm like, right, I'll throw a crack at start. At this point, I'm just like, you're a fucking idiot, Ben. Like, so standard. I did the same thing in Thailand. So standard of me. Just like tired, ADHD, just forgetting everything. You literally get off the plane. You go to the ATM. You put your card in. Your card just doesn't come out. You're like, oh, amazing. <laughs> Such a good start. So he's going to text me the next day at 10 a.m. I'm going to, you know, he's going to tell me if I can come back or not. 10 a.m. comes around, 12 p.m. comes around, no message. Brilliant. Okay. At this point in time, I'm just assuming I don't have a card for the next three weeks. I've got $100 to my name in cash. <laughs> I'm already like connecting with people online to, to figure out how I'm going to move like Bitcoin or stables to someone and do like an OTC trade to get cash out. In- <laughs> <laughs> All right, I barrel back to the airport. And um, so the the ATM where I got the money out was just outside the the arrivals section, like just through um, security. And on the way there, I'm like, how on earth am I going to go and get to the arrivals? Like, you know, like through security, like this is like just after security, like you've got to go through like where everyone walks out, where everyone's holding the signs. Like you've literally got to walk through there, back through the terminal the wrong way to get into the arrivals center where like the ATM is because it's still in the terminal. I'm like, that's not going to happen. I'm going to fuck security's going to throw me out. What's the, what's, what's the alternative? There is an alternative. So I said, fuck it. I just look like I knew what I was doing. Put the, uh, put the shoulders back and just walk with purpose. Walk through where people come out. Ruby <laughs> Revival's lounge. In through where the security is. Everyone's walking backwards. But security's looking at me like I'm, okay, who's this bloke? And I was just, I had my, I had my bag on me so I looked like I was <laughs> maybe just arrived. Walked all the way through right up to the security point to find the ATM and uh, finally found a guy 
Uh, they waved over the police officer. Police guy comes over. And I'm like, mate, I think my ATM, my, my card's in there. He's like, he's like looking real angry. I'm like, nah, dude, from yesterday. Like, I, I left my name. He's like, are you Ben? I was like, yes. He's like, ah. <laughs> oh, that, that could have, mate, that could have gone either way. They're like, this dodgy bloke's just selling oh, us a mate. story. He's probably got a bomb in his backpack. No, mate. Mate. I was only going to get arrested or was going to have my card. He's like, are you Ben? I was like, yes. He's like, aha. <laughs> oh, how good. Yeah. And all of a sudden he was real happy. So, uh, yeah, got my card and then, yeah, moved down to this villa. So, in this new villa, mate, uh, sort of four-bedroom villa. It's a shared villa, so other people like you here. Uh, and, yeah, got my own space. Been super wet, though, um, the last few days. But, yeah, man, it's been it's been awesome to be back. The, uh, the, the time I get to focus back on work and no distractions, like just going to the cafe and just dialing in, brain.fm, getting out of socials, putting the phone away really can go deep and also um the i'm back to the gym mate so four weeks after my operation i went back to the gym for the first time yesterday did an ice bath and a sauna for the first time in four weeks mate how to feel i was super anxious going into the ice bath man i didn't realize my body was really pressing against going back in the ice bath like i was super like fucking don't do it like the the part of your brain that's just telling you you're an idiot like why are you doing an ice bath was really pushing back did it anyway, did the two minutes, really hard the first two minutes, I was like, fuck, this is uh, colder than I remembered, went back in the sauna, went back in the ice bath, mate, felt like, felt like God, I was like, I'm back, feel amazing, um, went and did a workout, like half the weight of what I would normally do, like lost so much power and uh, muscle over the last four weeks, like, literally, oh, yeah. literally I've done nothing, takes like a day to lose muscle and a year to gain it, it's so frustrating, but just good to be back, honestly. And how are you feeling post-surgery, mate? Feeling much better post-surgery. I'm optim, mate. I'm feeling like I'm literally trying to optimize everything. My, I'm like, I'm so competitive on my sleep score. I had two drinks <laughs> last night. I went yeah. out, with a mate had two beers, and my my heart rate was elevated, so my readiness score was down, and I was so fucking gutted, mate. Like, I'm, I think I'm gonna just quit drinking because honestly, like that score, like I want to get my sleep score up because I'm trying to optimize my energy throughout the day. Um, but yeah, that back into my Vedic meditation I'm getting two 20 minute Vedic meditations in per day and I feel so zen getting journaling in twice a day reading and then just like working pretty much all day like it's Saturday today got a big day of work today like just feel like I'm really pushing shit forward man it's fucking it's, I, something about being over here is very stimulating uh, in, in my head so I can really focus you know what I mean there's no distractions being overseas for you is a big hack where they're huge accelerators for the business because you'll take time, you'll focus on a specific area, you come to a really good outcome. Whereas back in Australia, you'd be having meetings, you'd be distracted, yeah. you just not as productive as you are when you're overseas. Yeah, it's something about um, something about being on the road. I mean, there's pros and cons, right? So we had our masterclass on Wednesday. 320 registered Berks, big big event, right? You know, I was I was building up to it. You know, I was like, right, this is big, big opportunity for us. Did did the did the test webinar? Did did everything with Matt? Set everything up. Internet, right? Internet's the biggest thing, right? You're in Bali, you know. Loaded up the the old villa Wi-Fi here. 0. 0.5 megabit upload speed, like amazing. That's fucking great. Yeah. Not going to work. Load though. Got the 200 gig hotspot add-on pack on my mobile for backup. So plug that in. Everything was running smoothly. We're all good. We go live. There's 175 people on the on the call live. We hit live. It's all happening. We're ready, good energy, and then I can't hear anything. Matt's talking, I can't hear anything. I'm like, what the fuck? What are you saying, Matt? Matt, your audio's not working. All the chat goes, no, no, we can hear you both. I can't hear Matt. Oh. Okay, cool, calm, collected, Ben, right, new software. How do you change the audio? You can't. Once you go live, you can't change audio settings. Okay, cool. Oh, no. So we're about to go a live hour back and forth with Matt, and I can't hear him. Starting to get sweaty palms. Everyone's like, okay, let's ready to get in. What's a couple of minutes in? What the fuck am I going to do? Uh, and... Honestly, I'll put this down to like meditating because I, in, in previous times, I would have freaked the fuck out. Like 170 people live and like, and we just can't do anything. It's like, like Matt's co-hosting this thing. I don't even know when he's talking. Um, get him on WhatsApp, get him on a call. So he's he's got his phone like on his desk loudspeaker and we're going back and forth and we're muting and unmuting each other so there's no echo coming through the mic. Uh <laughs> turns out we get it through we executed really well we can we converted pretty well the feedback was great so we got through it 
But it's like one of those things about new environment, first night, new villa, there's no internet, the audio doesn't work. Like it's like one of those things of traveling that, that, that you, you build that, you build that, that muscle, you know, where yeah. like, it's very easy to just go, holy fuck and just be like completely overwhelmed. Like this is ridiculous, but like you try to build that over, over time and you just, you know, shit's going to happen. <laughs> That's that's a really good solution, man. Um, what I was thinking, I was like, oh, what would I do if that happened to me? And I'm like, I'd probably just join the webinar on my phone so that I could at least hear Matt yeah. and talk. But yeah. mate, to do it like last minute while you have to go, you got like 170 people live. What a nightmare. <laughs> but your internet now is brilliant. It's 50 times better than your Tasmanian internet. Yeah, it's good, man. I, I So again, lessons like you learn this over time. Get You don't need 10 gig. Get, get, get the max. I've got 200 gig like data on my hotspot. Like you just got to... Good, get to get everything right. Um, dude, it's just so great. Like, dropped off my clothes to get, iron, like, w- wash yesterday, $5. Done it, done within a day. Folded, packed, done. Uber Eats, like, just what the, the grab stuff just comes and delivers it. Ice bath, sauna, gym, all in one place. Cafe next door. And the, and the gym has a dispensary where it's, like, the most freshest quality. Dude, this food I had yesterday, I had 200 gram salmon fillets, rice, broccoli, and a protein smoothie for, like, $18. I'm like... This is just like the cleanest food. Everything's there and you just, you can just work. Like it's just phenomenal. I saw the video you put up on, it might've been Twitter about, oh, you're walking around your villa, which looks absolutely incredible with the pool, the different areas. I see you got the big princess bed in the background, mate. That's where the magic happens, mate. Over there with my cup of tea and my, uh, my book. <laughs> <laughs> and your audio books. And mate, not only this, you've had a bit of a win, mate. You found a little something, something. What do you mean, mate? What, what, in, what, what, in, in, the, in the sock drawer, mate. What did you find? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, where are you leading here, mate? What are we talking about? <laughs> what are you setting me up for? So I opened up the sock drawer yesterday, Bergs, and in just between the underwear and, and some, some, you know, odd socks, I found seven ETH. <laughs> so there's just seven ETH there. The blockchain was just going through your drawer and you just picked it up, mate. You just picked it up off the blockchain. Amazing. <laughs> Scooped it up, mate. And Twitter was, Twitter was going wild, man. So I posted... <laughs> Posted yesterday, I like just found seven ETH, amazing, and uh, <laughs> and, and at a hundred likes, it's been seen by like ten thousand people. We had like forty four comments, and people were just like, uh, "You better be explaining this investment strategy on our next webinar." <laughs> How good! So, so for those that are uh, that don't know the current price, it's about probably what eighteen to twenty grand Australian. Yeah, about twenty k. It's in the soft wall, mate. <laughs> so, so, how do I find seven ETH? Well, I was having a meeting with our finance manager yesterday, and. About two years ago, I, I moved a heap of ETH of mine to the company to, you know, to do some investments and whatever else, and kind of forgot that I'd done that. Like, I'd probably moved a lot more than 7 ETH. I reckon it was probably, I don't know, I was, at the time, I think it was like 35, 40K worth of ETH I moved across, and I forgot about it. It wasn't until I caught up with Ed, my accountant, because I was over in Perth. He's like, didn't you move, like, a bunch of ETH to the company? I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And then I like, spoke to our finance manager, yes, eh? and he was like, let me check. Yeah, you you actually there's <laughs> all these ETH. I'm like, where the fuck is that? Load up the ledger. Like, oh fuck, there's seven ETH there. <laughs> Giddy up. Um, so yeah, it's good. Uh, it, it, I don't think I'm going to do anything with it. It's like it's got it's, it's a good bit of exposure to ETH. Um, and I mean, I haven't pulled the trigger on the alts yet. I'm waiting on one final investment piece analysis from our senior analyst Nick before I pull the trigger. I've whittled the 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 list down but dude one of them the one that matt posts about to members is up 600 percent since he posted about it like yeah incredible like it's it's the old adage of like fuck if you miss the boat or you know are you still going to look in a year's time and look back and go well you missed the boat of missing the boat you know like because you thought you missed the boat well the goal is to outperform bitcoin right yes yeah all right so we'll talk about this offline then we'll bring it to the pod we'll bring it to the pod um, but yeah, so I found 7 ETH uh, and yeah, like literally just my day-to-day schedule uh, right now is I'm kind of working on optimizing a little bit. I, I Yesterday I, I got up, you know, was starting to work at about 7 a.m. through to, I had some meetings in the morning with with some US guys, you know, I worked through to about, I think it was probably about 2.30. So from about 7 a.m. to 2.30 went really hard. Then I did gym in the afternoon, which was kind of interesting. I've never really done that. I did gym, sauna, ice bath in the afternoon for about two hours, which was kind of a good breakup because by the time 3.30 rolled around, I was kind of fresh and ready to go again. So then I went went hard again from about 3.30 through to 5.30, then did another meditation, uh, had a shower, sort of chilled out, 
checked up on the cricket scores and went out for dinner. So, and that day was was one of my most productive days yesterday. So I'm I'm in an ring like look because I'm usually a morning gym guy, but potentially like the break up in the day, I, I'm going to play around with next next week because I'm all about just trying to see what works well, test, see see how you can sort of optimize the day. I've never really been a gym during the day guy, but that worked really well yesterday. So I think that's something I'm going to try next week. That's interesting. I'm always a gym during the day. And if I can't get to it because I've got a lot on, it'll be at night. And now I'm like, look, I just have to do it in the morning because sometimes I just don't get around to it. Yeah. So what I'm going to start modeling is in the morning, I've got a gym membership now. So I'll just go down to the gym and I'm going to do cardio in the morning to wake my brain up, right? I hate cardio, but you have to do it. Like a minimum, yeah. like half an hour on elliptical trainer, something like that, then build my way up. And then I love lifting weights, can do that anytime. I'll do that in the afternoon or I'll do a yoga session. So when I start, so in the morning, I'll actually wake up. My brain will be on. I'll be able to perform till about two, three o'clock. Brain will start to die. Then I'll do either a yoga session or body balance or lift some weights and then get power through the rest of the day. I'm going to start modeling that for a month or so and see how that goes. So that's fascinating, right? Because I, I, I'm, I'm sharper and better working environment in the mornings. And then I go out and do an hour and a half gym session in the morning. I feel as I'm using my physical energy, but my mental energy you know, isn't being utilized in the morning where when you're at the gym, you don't use your brain, you're just using your body. So like, should you optimize for the morning to go harder mentally? So get up at like, so that 5.36 range, do your meditation, do your journey, like start crunching in a work like 7 a.m. through to one or two o'clock, have a gym to break up the day, come back and do lower level like work, more admin stuff in the afternoon. I feel as though that's probably a better schedule. Yeah, so with me, if I wake up and let's say I journal and meditate, I will not be as on compared to if I worked out. So if I worked out, my brain will be on like 100%. And the reason it does that for me is my brain has 10 million thoughts, thinking about everything, like all these ADHD traits, right? And then if I, meditation and journaling helps with that, but having the physical stimulus of exercise turns on all those switches and I can focus on the thing that I need to with absolute clarity. I can even hyper-focus and be very high-performing in those areas. So it's more of a tool to get me into a specific state. Yeah, so that's a that's a really good point. I kind of forgot about that. You know, that clarity you get coming out of um, coming out of the gym. And that clarity you get is something that I do miss. So I'm going to be interested in that. One other thing I wanted to talk about, Bergs, was the ice bath. And someone was talking about this uh, on on my Twitter thread because I posted how I do <laughs> you do it backwards, mate. Go backwards. Well, I used to do it like gym first, then ice bath. But then I read something about actually doing it the other way. Uh, so, you know, what it says here is like cold exposure can have positive impacts on endurance, but a blunting effect if done immediately after workouts where the desired result is strength or hyper, uh, hypertrophy. So it, it was saying that like that dopamine hit that you get is like, I think for about four hours after you have that cold exposure and then go, so going from uh, ice bath into the gym, you actually get that increased workout uh, strength because you're getting, you're taking that dopamine into and that energy into your workout session. Yeah. Problem being with that is one of the, if, if you don't warm up through a sauna or pool after the cold plunge and you actually just let your body heat you up like that's where you actually start to get the cells moving faster and like it's actually better for you is your body starts to get used to heating up naturally but going from cold plunge into gym if you're like freezing cold like you're gonna do an injury <laughs> this this is it and i think like it, yeah you can be rooted in science but again if you look at the papers how many people were in it the way they did it how they controlled for it mate just try it and go with whatever works for you and base yeah. it on how you actually feel and how you perform yeah yeah, if, that, if that's like backwards, but it works yeah. for you, who gives a shit? Who cares? Yeah, I, I agree. Just Maybe a test in the right. That's it. Now you got a couple of things here. You got Maccas and you got driving rules, mate. You oh, have to mate. tell me about oh, those barley quirks. Dude, so like, went out for coffee this morning. Just had a quick breaky before the pod went out. Just a quick smash boot. Good feed, bit of a coffee. Come out, mate. And my scooter's parked next to the cafe. And then what's going on? There's two fucking scooters parked directly behind my scooter. Like, there's no way I can get out. Just old mate just pulled up right behind me with a fucking surfboard. And old mate just parked right behind me. Like, so I'm in front, wall in front of me, and two bikes directly behind me. Like, there's just no way of getting out. Just like, that's it. Yeah, I'm just going to stuck there. Look See you later. There's no around. 
Like, this is fucking Pinnacle Bali. So what do they do? I just fucking move their bikes. Just like, all right, got on got their bike, fucking pulled the thing up, right, pushing you over here, push yeah. it on, mate, and I broke a walk out. And no one gives a fuck, mate. They'll probably do the same to me. Like, <laughs> you just, just park wherever here. 100%. And the driving rules. No one gives a flying for who's around here. Like, people are like, you just, you know, like, oh, it's so loose in Bali, mate. I remember oh, you saying the transition, like, Thailand was somewhat yeah. woolly in Bali. Yeah. It's just mental. Nah, mate, it's just like, you know, if you see an opening, you just go. Like, you, you can't, like if you hesitate, you're fucked. Like, uh, <laughs> it's full negotiation, mate. Yeah, and, and the horn isn't used to, like, get out of the way. The horn is a warning sign here. So, like, if you hear a horn, there's someone fucking overtaking you. So, everyone's just on their yeah. horns. You're like, hey, don't, don't, don't move because I'm going to fucking kid you. That's it. So, like, over here, it's a warning you did something wrong. Over there, it's like, I'm coming. I need to let I'm you know. Coming. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, and then last time I went out for a couple of frothies with a couple, a couple of lads about 10, 30 o'clock. And I was just like, we just had massive feed, mate. Pizzas. I had like a burrito bowl, just some actually, heap of food, mate. And like- a burrito bowl last night too. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. 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 Like, I love that. yeah. Oh, so good. 10, 30 rolls around. I'm like, fuck, I feel like a Macca's. Because some guy was talking about Macca's during the day, Sarah. <laughs> I get stuck in but, your head. But only the Macca's in Bali was amazing. Like, fuck, I wonder where the Macca's is. It was like 15 minutes away. It was like raining. I was like, fuck, I'm going to Macca's. So right, boys, I'm going. Get on the scooter, mate. 15 minutes out to Macca's. Just absolutely tully for a chi- chicken burger. Go to Macca's. Order so much food. Order like fried chicken, nuggets, burgers, chips. Just order everything. Fuck it. Got, got out. Came out. Sit down. I looked at it. I was like, right, let's get into it. First of all, I ordered the spicy burger. And I can't do spicy. I had one bite. Nearly fucking blew my face off. Couldn't eat it. Mate, Asian spicy is different, mate. Like their medium is like blow your top off. Like it's, it's mate, crazy. Like, like like, in my head, I'm like, oh, this won't be spicy. He just gets it. Like, I don't order spicy food. Orders a spicy food in Asia. Takes one bite. Nearly fucking died. Like, I can't <laughs> and it's just on fire. You just go bright red. The, chi- the chicken came out. Looked at the chicken. I was like, I can't fucking eat that. Like, I'm, I'm going to be sick. Like, I'm, I just, I can just see it. I'm going to get barley belly. So, I didn't even eat the chicken. Nuggets. Ate, like, six chicken nuggets. I was, like, devouring them. After the six chicken nuggets, I'm like, oh, I don't feel so good. I probably shouldn't have eaten those. And then, <laughs> smash a diet coke. And then, mate, this morning, just no good on and off the toilet. Like, oh, just no. should not have eaten Maccas, man. Like, messaged my buddy from the last night. Like, that was a bad idea, man. Should not. <laughs> Half an hour return trip to eat barley Maccas was just a nah. poor idea. So what you need to do, have you had KFC over there? No. Bro, get amongst it. So even wherever you are, they do deliveries as well, or you can get someone just to go on a scooter and bring it back to you. Yeah. KFC, awesome fried chicken. And they serve it with rice, mate. So it's like literally like, you know, like a cheeseburger wrapper. It's like one yeah. of those. And inside is just like a bowl of like rice. And it is the <laughs> most delicious thing you will really? ever have. It is incredible, yeah. man. It's incredible. Yeah. You've got to get amongst it. <laughs> so yeah, you're there for another, what, three weeks? You got any plans on the horizon? You staying in the same place? What do you got on, mate? Stay in the same place. Uh, just working next week. I think I'm going to go to Ubud next weekend and just like disconnect. I've been looking at a couple of like shacks where like literally no no phone connection. Like throw the phone out for two days, completely disconnect. Looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, man, that's about it. Just just working. Um, tips for Bali like accommodation. Um, I, I I'm finding like villas where they like shared villas. It's, it's cheaper in a sense that you can uh, you're not just getting one villa to yourself, and you also meet people. I kind of like that. Like met a German couple that are like YouTubers in Germany and were like exchanging like strategies on YouTube, which was kind of cool. Then this other couple like from the US, I think the other, the chick was Russian and there's like this mum and her daughter and you just like meet in the communal area and just like the amount of people you meet here is just phenomenal. They're all doing like completely random stuff that just like self-sufficient nomads. It's like fascinating. That's just wild. And it, yeah, and it's so close to Australia as well. And I think, you sound like you're having a much better time than Thailand because when you were over there, everyone was kind of Russian, yeah. no one really spoke English. Over here, it seems like they've all got a bit of English you can kind of converse with them. Yeah. And there's so many remote workers here. Like, they're either influencers, remote workers, or they're on holiday. You know, that's kind of like that's kind of like the the, the three the, the three segments. So, no, nah, I'm enjoying it. Definitely recommend if you're wanting to go somewhere to remote work. Bali's definitely the vibe. Incredible, mate. Oh, well, we'll do another update in a couple of weeks, and we'll see uh, yeah. your adventures and what you get up to. Here comes the light. <laughs> Uh, thank you everyone for listening this is the Bird and Birds podcast if you've got a friend a family member or you uh, want to just travel to Bali hopefully that's been uh, it's been helpful we'd love for you to share this episode with a friend it's how we get the word around we're a year into Bird and Birds. we have no plans on stopping so thank you everyone for listening as always you can tweet at us at our new Twitter at Bird and Birds on Twitter or at Babybackberg 
My Twitter is at BenSimpsonAU. And we'll see you next time. See you, champions. <laughs>